David, how worried should we be about PacWest? Yeah, PacWest, they've been kind of on the ropes for a little while now, ever since Silicon Valley Bank went down and Signature went back, went down. You know, they've been in that grouping of higher risk kind of on the bubble banks and seeing that they lost 10 percent of their deposits. It's clear that some of their uninsured depositors are being spooked by the stock price action. Last week, after they were rumored to be, you know, in in looking for a potential, you know, strategic alternative, and the stock declined uh, significantly, um, they really saw about forty percent of their uninsured deposits leap. Now, the good news is that seventy-five percent of their deposits are insured, but it goes to show that some of these depositors that don't have the insurance are getting spooked and leaving. So now it's really a matter of liquidity. They yeah, do, do they have, have the liquidity to cover? Do they have the liquidity to cover those kinds of withdrawals? Yeah, it's a good question. They do. Um, so they've got 15 billion of uh, liquidity versus 5 billion of uninsured deposits. The real issue will be if the insured deposits start to leave, we saw about 10 percent of First Republic's insured deposits did leave. So if we see some insured deposits leave PacWest, that's when it can become a, a real issue. And uh, Dom, as you mentioned earlier, its market cap is down quite substantially. Two uh, newsworthy developments to mention as well. This morning, Jamie Dimon said maybe we should ban short selling of banks as we see this kind of uh, PacWest themselves blaming the media in some ways for that deposit flight and decline last week. And also the FDIC were working and announcing a plan to make those bigger banks pay up to cover the losses it's facing as we continue to see, you know, one go down after another. It is, and it's not just that. It's the incremental news flow that's causing just about every bank, small, big, medium-sized bank CEO, to have to respond to every single development that's happened. You mentioned the Jamie Dimon comments. There's also the Western Alliance came out. Maybe planned to give a deposit update or maybe in response to what they saw happening with the free fall in PacWest shares in the, in the beginning. If you take a look at the way the construct is shaping up for the banking industry, though, there's no doubt that it's going to structurally change. It's going to have to, either through consolidation at certain levels or by the bigger banks getting even bigger or taking on more responsibility for the health of the overall sector. And by the way, even if that does happen, what it does do is just give more influence to the big banks in America because they will ultimately be the ones that are seen as the ones backing everybody by and the time this the is all done. having the implicit guarantee. Correct. Too big to fail. You know, Hugh, maybe Dom just answered it, uh, but if deposits are leaving banks like PacWest, they're going somewhere. Where's the money going? Is it going to bigger banks? Yeah, sure. Is it going to money funds? Is it going into treasuries? Where? All of the above. They're going to bigger banks. Clearly, the top four have been beneficiaries, especially J.P. Morgan Chase. They're also going to money market funds, too, with the higher yield. Um, I think one thing we should really dwell on for a second here, though, is you know, the sequence of events. You have on May 2nd, after First Republic happens, you have uh, PacWest and others just drop like stones. Then, you know, according to the disclosure today, the 10Q out today, their deposit flight of about 10 percent really, really came in on May 4th and May 5th. So it is the self-fulfilling prophecy that analysts have pointed to. It is the perception of weakness leading to the actual weakness, which is, you know, kind of backwards in, in my way of thinking of things. And that's kind of the that's the cycle that we're dealing with today. Although I would mention, and maybe David, I'll ask you <clears> this. Part of the response was the fact that First Republic came out with those kind of disastrous earnings and then the story played out like it did. Should there be more proactive M&A happening now for the weaker players to kind of forestall another round of disclosures that are just going to kind of cause this problem to fester? Yeah, M&A, open bank deals are, are difficult to do in this type of environment because banks realize if they, the healthy banks realize if they hold out a little bit longer, they might get a better deal hmm. if they let some of the smaller, um, not as healthy banks, you know, go by the wayside and into receivership. So I'm not expecting consolidation in the right here and now, but I do expect consolidation to increase significantly as we look out to next year and we get some stability in the bank space.